Okay, so now that I've made my context map, um, let's just say I want to make a very basic um, dot density map, kind of um, a uh, demographic map to show where different groups of people live in this area. To do that, um, if you haven't made your dot density map um, data yet, I can help you do that. Um, there's also a plugin called um, dot density layer that you can find under manage and install plugins. Um, so if you're looking to make your own dot density or change the density, you can look at this dot map plugin and install that. Um, but I can help you do that next time we meet as well. Um, I think as you remember, the dot density is a nice way to show a variety of attributes at the same time rather than um, the core pleth, which I think you remember from our videos shows one variable or one ratio of variables at a time. So um, I'm going to go to my demographic data and I've made a one dot for every 10 people for Asian and black or African American, Hispanic or Latinx or white. So I'm actually going to just click all of these and bring them in to my map. And of course, this looks um, very difficult. This isn't really that helpful, right? Um, the dots are all very large because it's default. It's the default size of the dots. They're kind of confusing colors that are very similar. And the dots are so big that they're stacking on top of each other so we can't see what the actual spread of the data is. So um, one way to do that is to change, we wanna change the size of the dot and I don't know if you can see, but you see how the dots actually have like a little border, a little stroke around themselves. There's um, a color and then there's a black um, boundary around that. So I think to make this dot density map look more sensible and to make it more useful, I'm going to change the symbology so that all of the dots are smaller and that they, do, they don't have any stroke around the edge. They're just a, a co one color for a dot. Um, so to do that, I'm going to start with um, the most numerous, which is white. And so I'm shutting off these other layers so I can kind of see them more easily. And if you're if you end up bringing in tons of layers, sometimes it's helpful to group layers so that they you kind of keep track of them a little better. So before I get into my symbology, I'm actually going to do a little cleanup here and just um, select these layers. I shift clicked I shift clicked these. And now I can right click or control click and say group selected. And I'm going to call this group um, demographics, you know, or you might call it dot density. So how do I change the symbology? Well, hopefully at this point, you know that you can double click or right click and go to um, properties. And under properties, we have the same thing. It's a single symbol one every dot is getting the same symbol which is fine um, but I want to change the size and so I've done this before and I think that I'm gonna change this to 0.6 because I think that is about the size at which I'm gonna start to see the other dots so I could just try that and see what it looks like and go apply and now I mean even within that own data you start to see where the density of population is in different places. So that's that's kind of interesting. But I think you can also see, even though I've made it 0.6, um, it looks a lot darker. And that's because the symbol, this simple marker here, um, actually has a solid line that envelops the dot. So the first thing I'm gonna do to get rid of that is I'm going to get rid of that solid line and say no pen. So before with the police districts, we got rid of the fill and now with these dots, I'm getting rid of the stroke instead. So I say OK, I'm going to hit Apply. And there, the, all of those black um, outlines are gone from the dot. Now, um, we're going to have to do some pretty fancy symbology because I, you know there's so many colors going on with a base map that it's a little distracting. And I, I have a sense that these default colors are going to be confusing when we get them all, um, when we get them all symbolized. So how do I do this efficiently? It seems like I'm going to have to do a ton of clicking to get them all to be what I want them to be. Um, you can do that if you want. Um, one quick way to distribute a symbology is to copy it and paste it to others. So for instance, I know that I don't want all of these to be the same color, but I do want them all to be the same size. So instead of opening each layer individually to change the size, what I can do is I can right click 
the layer I just did it for. Go to Styles, Copy Style, or I can even say Copy Symbols a little faster. Um, but if I copy the style, I, I would say Symbology. I'm going to just say Copy Symbol because it's faster. And then I can select, shift click these guys, and I'm going to say, oopsie, I think. No, it's not letting me do that. Huh. All right. Well, let's, let's try again. Copy style symbology. It should let me do that. Let's try it again. Paste style. There it is. Um, so if I paste the style, I'll just turn these on so you can see. They're all going to turn the same color, but that's okay. It's really fast to change colors. So I'm going to say paste style, boom, and then they all turn to be the same size. So um, the colors obviously were default and were kind of pro um, problematic. So um, you know, putting color for uh, racial um, attribute is always tricky um, because people associate colors with kind of emotions. You know, red is bad, green is good. Um, and you don't want usually the colors to reflect any kind of, you know, skin tone or anything like that. So it, you have to be careful choosing colors for these dot densities. But um, one I feel works okay is if, you know, if white, if white is a, some kind of orange color or a purple color maybe. So I'm going to choose white as a, a, a bright orange just so that it shows up. And we want them to be bright so that we can kind of see them. Hispanic, I think I've been doing as kind of blue, like that. And black, I've been doing as green or yellow, nice and bright. I find it's good to do minority communities as a, as a bright color that stands on top so that you can see it more readily. Um, in this area, in particular, there, there's just more uh, a larger white population, so it's okay for that to be more of a background color so that the other colors can be seen more easily. And then I, I think I was doing um, Asian as a, as a red or a fuchsia or something like that. Um, that's kind of hard to see. So we'll do that. And then I, I might need to change the white. And I'm going to make it a little softer so that, there we go, just a little softer. And I'm, I'm changing this. It's What's kind of nice is you can change colors really quickly by just going to style and dragging around this wheel. Um, you can, of course, always change the color under the, you know, under the symbology tab as well. It just takes a few extra clicks. So I kind of like this dot density map now that I can kind of see the distribution. But I'm wondering if you can kind of notice, you know, what's the problem with this map? Um, to me... The base map has too many colors. The the colors of the base map are kind of robbing the the visual hierarchy of the symbols I've just made. They're ma they're muddling it. It's making it hard to see um, the dot density map. So you know you could just shut it off and look at a raw dot density map, but most people would probably find that confusing unless you had a really good um, you know some really good uh, legend and a good description. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna put in a different base map. So I'm gonna go back to my web open layers plugin, and I think it's Stamen. Yeah. So Stamen has this. These are two black and white things that they do: toner, which is pretty harsh, and then toner light, which is a little better. So I'm gonna just try this one out. This Stamen toner light, and I put that in, and it's a black and white layout. So at least at least we can kind of see. Um, the color is a little better. The, the labeling is a little harsh on this layout, I think, um, but it, it, it works. It's, it's, it's enough. If I wanted this to be a little lighter, I could right click and go to properties for this. And then um, I believe I can, I can tone down the strength of this. Maybe. Let's see. Oopsie. How do I change? Oh, transparency. That's what I want to do. I go to the transparency tab, and then I can turn it down just a little bit so that if I hit apply, you'll see it, it's going to soften that base map. Apply. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'll do it a little bit more. Maybe half, 50% apply. So a lot of cartography, I find, is is not making things, you know, a lot of times we think, oh, well, I've got to make something look darker, or I've got to make it more pronounced. And a lot of times the reverse is true. Really what you need to do is soften things that are just reference and don't matter as much, right? 
Now there's one more thing about this map that bothers me, and that's that the dots are on top of these police district boundaries. Um, that's just a personal preference thing. Um, I think the boundaries should be on top so that we can kind of see them uninterrupted. So to do that, I'm going to click and drag these police districts to the top. And you'll watch the map. You'll see they, boom, they're more clear now. Um, it just looks clearer that way, I think. So I'm, I feel pretty good about this. I think this is ready to be turned into a map and to export it. Um, and it has a lot that I can discuss. You know, I think, um, oh, another thing I should do, I'm going to put the, the location of the incident up to the top as well. Very good. So um, I'm also going to just save my project so that all these settings don't disappear, right? If I didn't save and I quit, um, none of the data would disappear, but all of my settings would disappear. I wouldn't be able to see, you know, if I reopened um, the program and hadn't saved, then um, all of my settings for the color and the size and the layer order would all be would all be gone. So that's why we save here. Okay, so I want to make a map that's identical to the one I made before, meaning it's the same scale, all of the features are on the same thing. So if I'm in a PowerPoint presentation, I can flip between the maps and they'll look like they're just changing and it's not, um, the location isn't changing. It's the same exact extent. Um, so I don't want to have to like go back here and do new print layout because then I have to, I have to reload my original map and I have to try to try to fudge it so that it's exactly the same. What I'd like to do is just duplicate my old map that I made and then have it just update with this new data. So to do that I'm going to go to my layout manager and um, I want to duplicate this and I'm going to call this dot density. And these um, these uh, these layouts even if I had gone to my context map, um, it would still look like this, but um, because these layout views just mimic whatever's in the canvas, right? So even my context map would look like this right now. But the reason I duplicated it is so that if I make changes to this or if I add a, add a legend, then um, when I do that, I still can get back to my other maps if I want to, um, you know, with and it will have the old title and it will have all the old stuff on it. So it's good to have multiple, you know, um, layouts if you're doing multiple, <laughs> if you're doing multiple layouts. So, so anyway, this is already pretty close. I think there's a few things I might change. I'm going to change the title. So I'll go over here and I'm going to call this um, uh, population uh, by race dot density. All right, so that's how we did that. And then I'm going to make this a little bigger to encapsulate it. There we go. And it might be helpful with this map to show, um, you know, I think to show what the colors mean, right? We know what they mean, but somebody who's just looking at this now might not know what it means. So I'd like to add a legend to this map. And I'd also like to give um, this text here, um, I think I want to make it, black and then maybe have a halo so that it's right now it's getting really lost in the colors. So I'm going to take my arrow tool and I'm going to click this and um, I'm going to go down to my font color here and just hit black like that. Um, and I think that's good. I don't really think I actually can even, I don't know if I can do a halo easily with this. So for now I'm just going to do that um, a halo is when you add a kind of a shadow to the text to help it stand out from the background. Um, and I can show you how to do that. Um, there's ways to do that in, um, you know, in the in the print composer, or sorry, in the um, canvas view. But I think actually just changing the color seemed to work here. So I, I, I'm okay with it. Um, okay, so I want to add a legend and then I'm going to be done. I'm going to grab this uh, box and go control C, copy, paste and make another box down here for my my legend and I'm gonna keep this pretty simple I think what I want to do is just make us uh, four circles one for each color and go add shape add ellipse and then I can just draw and it's if I hit shift it'll make it so I, it forces me to draw a circle and this is gonna help me there and I'll turn the style 
and simple fill, make the color um, orange. And if you want to be really fussy, what you can do is make sure that your color is the same as this by using um, what are called either RGB values, red, green, blue, or this HSV, which is hue, saturation, and value. Um, and it looks like that circle is below my rectangle, so that's why I can't see it right now. So I'm going to bring that up to the top like that. So there's one dot, and if I want all the dots to be the same size, I'm just going to go copy paste like that, copy paste, and it's kind of helping me line them up a little bit, which is nice. Copy paste like that, and that's that's perfect, just like that. And I'll make this one blue, you know, I'll make this one green, and this one red. And so now what I want to do is grab my text, and I'm going to make one here that says white, like that. Copy, paste, and I'm going to go like that, and I'm going to call this one is... Hispanic, and then we'll go black or African, oopsie, American, and it's not, it doesn't fit right now, there we go, like that, and then the last one, copy paste, and this is Asian. Now, I think you can kind of tell how there's a lot I could do to make this look a little cleaner and nicer. Um, and there's probably a lot of problems that I could address or somebody might point out about this map. But um, for the purposes of not this coming Monday, but a week from Monday, we'd like to have you be able to show um, a few maps that, that provide us a little bit of perspective on the environment in which your, your case study of, of the killing happened. Um, and and I think for your papers, you know, we'll look at trying to trying to make these look pretty good. But um, for the next couple of weeks, let's just focus on getting used to um, exporting maps and you know, kind of labeling them and making a legend and that kind of thing. Uh, because for your papers, we'll need to make sure we include the sources and a few other credits and things like that. So this is this is to me this is done. And what we're going to do is just export this as well as an image. I'm going to ignore that. And now I say, the last one, I, it was called Minneapolis Police District. So I'm going to call this Minneapolis um, dot density race, like that. Say OK. And what's great about you know duplicating those is now, if I wanted to put these two JPEGs into a PowerPoint, and I put them in exactly the same spot, you know, you can toggle between them like this, right? So if you go back and forth, then everything kind of stays in the same place, but you get to compare if you're talking or in your paper, you can kind of show, um, you know, that this is, yep, this is a central business district. Not a lot of people live there. Um, this is a dense, diverse community, right? You can kind of start to make some uh, interesting discussions about it. So. I hope this has all helped. I know it's longer than I um, said, but um, hopefully it's 40 minutes well spent if you got through it. So I will see you each individually at our meetings. All right, thanks.